And welcome once again to The Verdict. Mick Cornett with Camp Myers. Glad you're with us. We're here every week meeting interesting people and dealing with topical issues. And this week, we have a very special guest, Harold Hamm, joining us today on The Verdict. Yes, we are really pleased to have Harold join us uh, and talk to us about his background, fascinating background and career in the mm -hmm. oil and gas industry and the uh, building and development of continental resources, a fine oil and gas firm that operates primarily here in Oklahoma. Mm -hmm. And we're really pleased he'd give us time. I know he's a busy guy. This guy has done a lot for the state of Oklahoma, the community of Enid, and as well as uh, the, the entire state, as Kent mentioned. Harold Hamm, today on The Verdict. We'll be right back. A greener planet, cleaner air, a healthy economy, national security, a smaller deficit, and a stronger dollar. Green jobs, better jobs, energy independence, warmth and light and transportation. These are the reasons Chesapeake champions natural gas every day. Wilsey Meyer Eatman Tate. We're accountants. We do taxes, business valuations, estate planning, and consulting. And we're right here in Oklahoma working with the owners of small and medium sized businesses. Steve Wilsey and Stuart Meyer have the resources and the experience. Wilsey Meyer Eatman Tate in Oklahoma City and Tulsa. Welcome back to the set of The Verdict. Mick Cornett with Kent Myers, and Kent's going to introduce today's guest. Today, we are really glad to have Harold Hamm join us. Uh, we are delinquent in not having him on several years before, but we're really pleased uh, he could make it today. Uh, Harold is chairman and chief executive officer of Continental Resources, an, an Oklahoma firm. He grew up in Lexington, Oklahoma, and in the Enid area, graduating at, uh, from high school in the Enid area, and started his first work in the oil and gas business by pumping gas in a service station. Thought he'd learn it from the ground up, and he sure learned fast. Uh, he uh, had some individual uh, exploration activity that turned out well, and uh, that has uh, uh, burgeoned into the firm now known as uh, Continental Resources. Uh, Harold is not only active in the oil and gas industry, but he's active in many cultural and, and civic events, both in Oklahoma City and in Enid. And uh, we're really pleased that uh, he could join us today. Thanks so much for joining us. Well, thanks. Thanks Glad for the invitation. I'm Glad to be here. That's a fascinating story. What did you truly learn pumping gas that might have, have aided you in your adult years? Well, I tell everybody I was in Enid at a unique time in its history. Uh, Enid has a rich tradition for the oil business. Uh, it was the home of Champlin Petroleum back then, and there was a couple of booms that had happened up there. The Hennessy boom happened in 1960, so when I got there in 1962, there was a kind of an atmosphere was charged, you know, with mm -hmm. energy. A lot uh, of excitement. A lot of excitement. All these uh, charismatic people, some bigger in life, you know, and it, <laughs> it's it kind of grasped my attention as a young man. Well, you tell a story there. in your in your bio. I read it. You don't tell it. I read it uh, where you you went out on a hill and could in a certain spot out there in in the Enid area, and you could see uh, an awful lot of drilling rigs at one time. Yeah, this was uh, after I'd gone to Ringwood, Oklahoma. Uh, Ringwood boomed in a '64, '65, and from the top of that hill north of Ringwood, you could count 28 drilling rigs without moving, just in a circle there. Wow. So, it was, uh, the, so the great Sooner trend field mm -hmm. was being developed and uh, it had a big boom but on it. But it's a significant step from pumping gas and viewing oil wells from getting an actual share of an ownership. How did you make that transition? How did you get from point A to point B? Well, you know, like I say, it's a unique time in Enid's history and that, that got me interested. Uh, 
my passion for the oil industry uh, happened uh, in, during high school. Uh, I was in distributive education class with Mr. Jewel Ridge up there, and, and I did a thesis on the oil industry, and it grasped my imagination that, uh, you know, studying these people like Bob Kerr and E.W. Marlin and uh, Frank Phillips, that you could go out and discover this ancient wealth. <laughs> and just by being a little bit smarter than everybody else, maybe a little bit more fortunate. And uh, so anyway, I, I decided that that's something I wanted to be involved mm -hmm. with. And so I started working in the service business after, after high school, working for a service contractor in the oil field. And that got me started. Later worked for Champlin. <clears throat> then I got a chance to go in business for myself in the service business, cleaning out tanks and, and all that business. So I started bottom rung of, of the ladder, if you will. Mm -hmm. And uh, eventually your interest moved to geology. Well, it was, it was there all along, uh, but, you know, it, uh, uh, I had to learn a whole lot. I, you know, I just uh, uh, chose some mentors, some people that knew the business very well. and, and uh, but so My, my guess is that, though, that, that maybe the history. geology angle was part about the risk, because the, the oil game in the 1960s, in my perception, is it was a lot riskier than it is today, that the technology that was, a, that was available to determine whether or not a well would actually produce goods um, it was a lot riskier then than it is now, and so to, to have a, an understanding of the geology back in the 1960s probably is more important than someone who's trying to operate today because it seems to me like the material might be more readily available. Well, we're, we're dealing with resource plays today, and back then we were dealing with conventional uh, plays, uh, uh, con con conventional formations, and uh, so it was somewhat riskier. I believe you're right. There were dry holes. I mean, yeah. it was possible to get nothing, it right? Was, it was uh, very possible. It still <laughs> is, <laughs> particularly back then. It was very possible to get dry holes. Well, talk about the formation of Continental Resources. Well, uh, we incorporated uh, this company in 1967, so we've been around a long time. Uh, uh, and, you know, we worked for an awfully long time here in Oklahoma. And one time we were 65% gas. Uh, we decided in the 80s that uh, knew too much about gas and with some of the rule changes by the FERC, Federal Energy Regulatory Commission, that they were dumping the reserves of uh, U.S. gas on the market and the market was going to be soft for an awfully long time. So we made the conscious decision to uh, start looking for crude oil. And so that's what we've concentrated on in the last 20 plus years. And today our company is 75% crude oil, and the market is a lot better for crude than it is for natural gas. Uh, you, you know, on a BTU basis, about six to one. Today, oil's trading at about 20 to one mm -hmm. uh, per MCF of, of natural gas. So it's a huge disparity. And uh, the headquarters are? Enid, Oklahoma. Enid, Oklahoma, and you've made that's a conscious decision to keep the, the headquarters in Enid. We've seen companies grow and grow and seem to want to go to a larger place, and, and you have kept them in Enid. We have. Uh, you know, we office about 225 people there in Enid, uh, have uh, about 425 uh, all over the country, and mm -hmm. so, uh, you know, we, we've uh, grown the company there, and, and uh, it's well established, and uh, so we like eating it. It's, it's treated us very well. And you call your company a drilling and exploration company? We are an E&P company. We're an exploration and production exploration company. Exploration and production, yes. yes. Mm -hmm. uh, and about how many states uh, would you be active in at a given time? We're active in about 20 states. Really? Uh, of the U.S., yes. And how much of it is in Oklahoma, what percentage-wise? Well, about... Uh, Sixty-five percent of our budget goes into the Rockies, and so that's Montana, North Dakota, and South Dakota, mm -hmm. those three states. Keeping up with, with trends and information must be critical to someone who's trying to help direct a, a firm like yours. What are your sources for information? When you get up in the morning, what are you looking for? What information do you need? What all the vast information that's out there, what does Harold Hamm need to help him make decisions that day? Well, everybody's tired of drilling reports, you know. So, <laughs> yeah. so we do that if you're... And, and give you me know. an example. What's a drilling report to someone who's not in the industry? Well, you know, the, the rigs that are working that mm -hmm. we, we have up there, you know. And so it's how they're producing? So no, you, it's you, uh, how, how we're drilling, mm -hmm. you know, or uh, uh, how 
all of them are operating, the rigs that are out there drilling for us. Uh, so Connell doesn't own drilling rigs, but we have a lot of operations uh, by contractors. So all of us are interested in, you know, what's going on in the field. So that's your, that's mm -hmm. your first view And, and decisions day. have to be made to increase production or to decrease production based on a lot of different factors. Well, we're, you know, the drilling reports that we have uh, are basically telling what those drilling operations are. And, and then we, of course, we have production information and, and whatever. But, you know, basically uh, a, a company like ours, we're, we're producing full bore. I see. So you're trying to get it out as fast as you that's can. That's what we do. Right. Yeah. And we're, we're price takers, not price makers. So mm -hmm. It's a commodity. Yeah, it's a commodity. Yeah. Uh, so we're, we produce it, we get it to market, and do that as cheaply as we can, and then we get the best price we can, uh, hopefully, that someone has to offer. Uh, any given day, uh, at least in recent history, how many uh, different uh, rigs would you have in operation at, at, at one time? Well, the most rigs that we've had operating for us at one time was in uh, uh, October of 2008. We had 31. Wow. So, wow. you know, we're getting built back up to 17, 18 rigs mm -hmm. uh, right now, uh, approaching 20. Mm -hmm. And uh, so we're, we're adding rigs in, in some of these active areas. You're still looking. <laughs> we are. It, it seems like in the last 12 to 24 months, there's been a lot of of new finds. It seems like there's, in, and maybe it's mostly natural gas, but off the coast of this country and off the coast of that country, all of these, these, these new opportunities for exploration are starting to, to come to surface. Uh, did you necessarily see all that coming, or is it an increase in technology? But why is there, a, why is there an increase in, in, uh, in, new, in new findings when you would think, gee, you'd, you'd think we'd have found all the oil there was 20 years ago? How can we continue to find new resources and something that's been there all along? Well, <clears throat> the independents have. Uh, well, exploration companies like Continental and Chesapeake and uh, Sand Reach and others done a great job the last few years with technology. You know, we're able to drill down two miles and, and go out 9,000 feet or, or more and, uh, and then segment the lateral section of the hole with 30 different stage fracks. Hmm. And so we're able to develop the source rocks themselves, the shales. Right that used to, you know, believe, uh, everybody believed that you couldn't do that. It was wasteful. Yeah, you couldn't do that, but we're able to do that now. Hold that thought, we're gonna come back after a break. We're sure. visiting with Harold Hamm, next on The Verdict. I'm Beulah Shavney and I'm an original member of the Women's Army Auxiliary Corps, and I'm Chickasaw. I worked at the Phoenix Indian Hospital for a year, and then there was the war. I felt like it was my duty I wanted in the Army, so I made it, got in. And it was a good feeling to put that uniform on. We were one of a kind that <laughs> started something and uh, finished it. To see these women go in today, they are really doing a great job. And I'm very proud to look back now and see that I was one of the first ones of the Army that went in. There is just something that stands out about Chickasaw women. They want to go as far as they can go and succeed. And I've got to do my best because I'm Chickasaw. In Oklahoma, with the technology that's being developed every day, it would be difficult to get much better than it is now, but I anticipate that it will. Technology is always going to improve. It's always going to get better, and as it does, these fields will give up more and more of their natural resources. I think with technology and, and the way they're doing it, it'll be a good, clean, environmental place, and uh, I'm blessed to be here. The oil and gas industry runs deep in our history and gives us a sense that we have a really strong future ahead of us. Welcome back to the set of The Verdict. Mick Cornett with Kent Myers. We're visiting with Harold Hamm. Your response, if any, to the president's recent announcement that he was going to start encouraging offshore uh, development of, of energy. Well, you know, a lot of people discount the importance of our domestic E&P industry. And, and, you know, I, I'm glad to see any support that he will give it. You know, we need to open up 
not only the offshore that he uh, recently announced, but also some, so much of the public lands. About the same time they announced taking off of the table a lot of the public lands that have been open to us. So, you know, it's kind of a two-edged sword there, uh, uh, been that announcement. We recently uh, had a chance to go up and visit with Secretary of Energy Chu, Stephen Chu. Very good visit. Uh, told him that how important the domestic industry was uh, to, to America. Actually, you know, the imports uh, were gaining on it. Uh, uh, for the first time in a long time, we're, our production was up last year, and I'm talking about our production being in the U.S., mm -hmm. was up about 2.3 percent. So it was a, a big change uh, move, moving up. A lot of that came from the Bakken uh, in North Dakota, mm -hmm. Montana. A lot of it came from the deep uh, subsalt offshore. Uh, you know, those, those areas can be done safely and environmentally uh, friendly and should be developed. Um, so we're, for, for the first time, we're in, in improving our stance uh, with the, and decreasing the amount of imports coming into the country. Imports down about 55%. I think in five years, uh, this country could be less than 50% imports of crude oil. And I think that's terrific. Hmm. That would uh, be a great progress. So we've made a, a, a lot of uh, progress in the right direction. Uh, the independents have certainly done their part. They drill 90% of the wells, produce 86% of the gas, 68% of the crude oil in America. So we're doing our part. You know, we do need some help. Well, <clears throat> speaking of help, and you, you need help, but you don't need bombs thrown at you, such as cap and trade. Uh, do you think cap and trade is pretty much uh, a dead issue now? Well, from the people we talk to, it seems like it is. And I certainly hope it is. Uh, it needs to be off the table. Uh, there's a lot of things that we can do. You know, this country is uh, flush with natural gas, and we have about 200 year supply of natural gas. If technology would advance uh, like it has with our drilling mm -hmm. in, the, in the gas to liquids area, you have all this pipeline infrastructure in America. You know, if we could. Uh, use the gas to liquids technology and, and burn mm -hmm. clean natural mm -hmm. gas in the future, that'd be terrific. Sometimes the industry gets demonized. And uh, there have been uh, spokespeople in your industry, T. Boone Pickens comes to mind, but people like yourself who are running large companies, sometimes I, I, it must be a frustration that sometimes you think your voice is not being heard because um, uh, people start blaming uh, the, inter the industry for gasoline prices, for instance, start blaming the industry for things that are completely beyond its control. Is there a frustration uh, from, from where you sit and, and sometimes you just want to bang your, your fist on the table and, and just scream the truth about what's going on in, in the country and, and the industry in general? Well, that's a good question. Uh, <clears throat> I think we need to do more. Mm -hmm. We need to be out uh, talking, to tell the story more and doing more about our plight, if you will. So I, I don't get as frustrated as a lot of people get, uh, perhaps, but we need, to, we need to be telling the story. And, you know, the fact of the matter is we've been under OPEC dominance for 50 years. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people, uh, you know, lost the will to look for oil here. Because every time they got started, uh, the, you know, the OPEC would turn on the taps mm -hmm. and the commodity price would go down. Uh, a lot of people would lose lose everything they had, and so they lost the will to look for crude oil. Mm -hmm. But today, there's there. After all that happened for 50 years, there's a huge undeveloped resource here in America. The Bakken is a Bakken Shale in North Dakota is a good example of that. That's a 4.3 billion barrel resource that's recoverable today with today's technology that USGS gave that last year. And that didn't include the Three Forks sand formation that's been found in addition to that that underlies a, a, a good portion of that field. It's a huge resource that's available today. That's just one of them. It, it would, if, if all produced, it would probably outstrip all the other production in the United States, would it not? Well, uh, 
you know, North Dakota has doubled their production already, uh, and it looks to double again yeah. uh, over the next five years. Estimates by the NDIC, North Dakota Industrial Commission, uh, are estimating that it may approach 500,000 barrels a day from uh, that state alone. Uh, hmm. Who have been the strongest influences in your business life and your personal life? Oh, gosh. Uh, you know, a lot of people, uh, you know, started with teachers, a lot of mentors that mm -hmm. mentored me when I was a young man that, that took the time to mm -hmm. teach me about the business. Well, and that access to education is, I know, a, a, something you believe in very strongly. It is. Uh, you know, it, without education, uh, you know, you couldn't break the poverty cycle that <laughs> we were all uh, caught up in from the Depression days. So uh, I do. I, I believe uh, very strongly in education. Well, you went back and, and got your uh, college degree in geology after you were already in successful in the business, did you know? I went about it all wrong, and, <laughs> you know, just don't do that, and, uh, you know, but yes, I couldn't afford to go to college right out of high school, so ten years later, you know, I went to Phillips University and took all the geologic classes that they offered, and, uh, you know, it, about three years was a great experience for me, and allowed me to do what I do today. What kind of corporate culture do you want uh, the employees of Continental Resources to experience? Well, we're, we're kind of a family up there. You know, we have a, a culture that cares about their employees, cares deeply about their employees, and we, we take care of each other, uh, very dependent upon one another within the community and uh, our city and state. Uh, so that's the uh, that's way I describe it probably uh, better than anything anything else. Well, isn't a big example of that the fact that you've kept the headquarters in, in Enid when you very could have been lured a lot of places, I expect. Well, a lot of people, you know, the big deal a few years ago was to go to Houston yeah. if you're an oil company. And, uh, you know, I, I'm sure glad we didn't make that move. <laughs> <laughs> well, what's the, what's the future of the, of the oil and, and natural gas business? Should Oklahoma be bullish on the industry in general? Absolutely, we should be bullish. Uh, you know, it, we're so blessed. We have a, a great, rich tr tradition here uh, in Oklahoma. Uh, a lot of great companies. A lot of quality jobs produced by the industry. A lot of quality jobs. Mm -hmm. we, we certainly do. And the industry uh, is very strong in the state, and uh, it, I think it will be in the future. Mm -hmm. Well, your, your personal experience is certainly one of giving back to the community, not just uh, being successful in the business area. Are there certain charities or certain uh, areas of uh, the community that you're particularly fond of helping? Well, there is. Uh, you mentioned education. That's certainly one of, one of those. Uh, and I'm very passionate about diabetes. Uh, you know, we've uh, teamed up uh, out, out here with David Bourne and, mm -hmm. and uh, have a number one research and treatment center here in Oklahoma City in Tulsa. And uh, I'm very proud of that. I'm kind of like Boone Pickens in this sense. Uh, Boone says we ought to always give it away while we can and while we're alive yeah. and, and we're able to see where it goes and, it, and the good it does. Yeah. You know, a lot of people wait too late. They, they're not able to see that. Well, you're doing lots of good, Harold. Yes. Well, Absolutely. Harold Hamm, uh, Continental Resources, thanks very much for coming on the show. We've enjoyed having you on The Verdict, and it's an inspiring story. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks for in Thank inviting me. Kent and I'll be back with a final word right after this. naturally to Tulsa, where nature's beauty is matched with an eye for aesthetics. A legacy of neighborhoods graced with lawns and landscaping and handsome homes. A place that seems to have patented an ideal lifestyle. Bank First is loyal to the quality of life Tulsa assures its citizens, to the priority placed on education, culture, and growth. 
loyal to builders who transform raw land into residential charm. Developers who see opportunity and add vitality to Tulsa's economy. Bank First serves both enterprise and private lives that need a loyal partner. It's how we help nurture this city's very good life. Bank First. Loyal to Oklahoma. Loyal to you. The Journal Record is pleased to be a sponsor of The Verdict. The Journal Record. Since 1903, the best source of Oklahoma business news and legal information. And for almost 30 years, Oklahoma political, government, and business leaders have turned to the McCarville Report for accurate, reliable, inside information. Visit the McCarville Report online. Welcome back to the set of The Verdict. Mick Cornett and Kent Myers, we're wrapping up the show we visited with Harold Hamm. Yes, Continental Resources and Harold Hamm are together doing great things in Oklahoma as well as outside our borders, but it's certainly another example of a native Oklahoman building a company from scratch and being very successful in it and being loyal to uh, his roots. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, this is a, a homegrown story, a, a guy that, um, as he said, uh, started uh, pumping gas at a, at a filling station and and wound up as, as one of the most powerful uh, figures in the industry. And uh, it's quite a success story and one that I think we can all learn from. Yes, uh, he is uh, certainly uh, in the industry uh, filled with a lot of uh, independent oil and gas people in Oklahoma. He's one of the most respected and uh, well thought of and we're pleased he'd give us uh, his time. And his philanthropy is, is well noted. He mentioned the Harold ha uh, Diabetes Center at the University of Oklahoma. Mm -hmm. and he also helps a number of educational instances. He really believes and has a passion to make sure that every young person has an opportunity to get an education. You know, I guess what they do with it is up to them. But Harold <laughs> wants to make sure that opportunities are there for, 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 uh, for Oklahomans and, and uh, specific to, to his situation when he was growing up. In, well, that's in good for all of us. Oklahoma. Absolutely. A uh, couple of websites that we'd love to tell you about. First of all, you can reach Harold's company at Contrest.com, C-O-N-T-R-E-S.com. And of course, you can send us a note at TheVerdict.tv. Tell us about a guest you'd like to see on an upcoming edition of The Verdict. We'll see you next week. The preceding program was produced exclusively for the Cox Channel.